Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, what type of database would you suggest to use for social media data? So let's get into it. Now social media data, now the person who asked this question uh, pretty much just outlined all the things that he was talking about and it's of course, alright so you have a post, you have comments, you have followers these sorts of normal things that you would expect from basically any social media site, right? And the way that I kind of think about this is very depend... I, basically, I just asked him back, how big do you want to make the system? Because if we consider the, the size of the project itself, it may actually vary a little bit. I'll give you the short answer. The short answer is a graph database because a graph database is pretty much like if you look at the, what the larger companies are using, they are using graph technology to represent a social media social media network because that is actually what it is. It is a graph of well, people connected to various entities within that system. So it fits very, very well into a graph system. But I will also raise my finger and I will say that there's a very good reason as to why that is and why that is very common at large scale, but it might not necessarily be the best thing when you first start out. It could be, I'm not saying it sh you shouldn't try it out, but just hear me out first and foremost. So you see, the benefit of having a graph database at scale is because you will have a very complex set of features. It is very likely that you will have queries and needs to actually express that you need to get the follower of somebody, a, a follower's f connections and the follower's followers and the follower's followers followers and so on and so on and so on. You have what, I, what we call very complicated relationships between your different nodes within the graph. And once you have that sort of problem, it becomes very, very unperformant to use a so-called relational database, for example, where you tra traditionally just have a very linear, like a one-dimensional structure. And in order for you to actually express a relationship and, con and basically grab the data that is related to each node or each row in this case in the table, you're going to do what we call a join. And a join is basically you just finding two tables where the first, well, the first row has some type of external foreign key, if you will, where you can latch on the row from another table onto that instead and basically switch out the ID for that row because that ID maps to a row in another table. Now, for a simple relationship, maybe having one relationship way like maybe you have a user and that user has one single list of followers but you don't really care about grabbing the followers followers you're just grabbing the followers to the original person that's a fairly small concatenation a very easy join to make but as i said imagine if you now increase that by saying that i don't want just the followers followers i want the followers 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 and so on and so on and so on you can imagine like the the problem like it, each of these rows, each of these followers are going to in, the, in turn make another join and add on even more followers and so it kind of goes on. You can probably imagine that this problem grows exponentially quickly, like you, the performance will, will, will die very, very, very sharply, very quickly if you have a really big query with a lot of users. So that's where a graph database stays fairly performant. It's very linearly performant in these sorts of situations. But think about this now as well. Is that your requirement? Because it is most likely going to be the case that you're going to start out with a very simple application. And I mean, having comments or a post or just a list of users, that is a very good fit for any type of like normal day, non-graph database like a relational database or a document database, it's a fairly simple data structure. It's fairly easy or just to maintain if it's that small. So what I want you to think about here, and this is what I told the, this viewer, was that if you have the need to have a sophisticated query structure. In other words, that, that's the thing that should dictate it. How, how sophisticated do you need to make the graph of all these users or all these entities? If it really is a true social network, it's not something you're just doing as a toy project, it's something that's going to be used at scale, then you should look at a graph database. And if that's the case, my personal favorite is Neo4j. Their, their licensing is a little bit 
expensive, I still think, but there are deals that you can cut with them uh, as if you're working for a startup, for example. But it, I've, the community edition is really good. I, I, I really enjoy working with that database. But unless that is your use case, because remember, that is a, you really need to think about that. It's a great database for this specific issue, but you shouldn't use it just because, if, you know, there are easier ways to achieve this goal if your use case is a little bit more simple. And that's what I want to touch on. If you truly, or if you're just making your own personal network, like take Facebook, for example, they didn't start off with a graph database. They had a normal MySQL database, just as every single, like most people had back in those days. And what I'm saying is that that is the sort of, that, that, that may be the best first step. Because remember, it, it's about the size of the problem. It may be that the big boys and the big girls, you know, the big companies, they use graph databases. Because, as I said, they have a network that is so massive that they, they kind of need it. Let's be honest. But you, just starting out, may actually benefit from just having a more simple thing, which is as basically what I'm saying here. So think about that before you make the decision to go with a graph database. Because remember, just because you are, you know, just because you have the idea that somebody else is already, well, doing basically, you shouldn't just go and do the exact thing that they are doing without really considering the use case they have versus what you have. Google is a similar thing where microservices is, microservices is extremely, you know, it's very popular among a lot of people. And a lot of people misuse them because they don't understand the use case. So they create the, their little toy API and split that up into a bunch of microservices when they could have just used the monolith, which would have saved a lot of time and complexity because they look at what Google is doing and Netflix are doing, and they think that they should do the same thing. And it is true that maybe they should do the same thing when they have millions and millions, if not billions of users every single month. And thousands of employees but they don't so i like to say it's trying it's kind of like trying to water a plant with a fire extinguisher it's or a fire hose it's too much for too little so you should always think about using the tool that is right for the given problem and not the other way around so don't just do what the big boys are doing just because you think that that's the way it should be done really ask yourself what is my use case what is right for me and start there because you can always migrate these things later that's how the big companies do it they don't start out with all these super systems they start with smaller solutions and then they migrate over to bigger solutions have a great day